Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. My name is Rodin and today I'm going to show you guys how to lay bricks to a line. Very simple little video. Everyone needs to know if you want to have a go at laying bricks and also what you need to do is check out this video that I'm linking up here and also there's a link in the description. It's how to build a corner. You need to build corners first to run brickwork in. What we'll do is uh, jump up on a scaffold, show you what we're looking at and we'll go from there. Right, so what we're going to do now is get a set of lines we've got corner blocks probably don't need corner blocks we'll use corner blocks on one end anyway so what you need to do is first off you need to have a corner at each end whether it be on the corner whether it be on the corner of the building like a corner like so or whether it's just a straight up rack back this is where you rack back so it just steps it back up and up and up and up like a little pyramid so you do that, but on this, in this, on this side, I've just done it in a straight line. I'll switch over to my GoPro and we'll set up some lines and uh, I'll show you exactly how to lay bricks to a line. Nice simple video and uh, hopefully you guys learn something today. Right, before we get going starting laying any bricks, just going to go through what we're going to need, what you're going to need to do this. First off, set of lines. I've already set these up on one end and yeah, just a set of lines, nice brick lines with a bit of stretch to them. One or two corner blocks. I will show you how to make these in another video. They're very simple, you don't have to go out and buy them, just a piece of wood and cut it up. But I'll show you how to do that in another one. One or two, depending on what corners you're on. If you're on corners like that one down there, then they go on the end, one on each side. Then, four foot level, two foot level, boat level, just in case. You're probably not gonna use the lead these levels, but, they're there if you need them. Jointing iron for once you're done, to rub it all up with. Hammer, in this case, I'm using half bat bricks in, so I use a hammer just to break them in half nice and easily. If they are a bit chipped off, normally I like to do them with a trowel, but if not, this is called a scutch hammer. You've got two little slits in either end and you can put different pieces in. This is a chisel scutch, but you can also have tooth ones that they look like that. But with that, you just, it's essentially, it's a double-headed brick hammer. So also what else you need, a hammer and a bolster. Again, in case I want to cut them a brick more precisely, you just use a hammer and bolster. And then a brush to brush it over with after you've jointed it up. Oh, and of course, the weapon of choice, the trowel, the brick trowel. I use a Marshalltown 1911 Philadelphia pattern trowel. That's that, let's get on with it. Right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to set up a set of lines, lines like these. I've already set this end up. All I've done is I've just banged it into the brickwork because I've racked this back, I can't use a corner block. So I just racked it back, banged it in there. And this other one, we are going to just bang it in the wall over here with a hammer. Oh, you don't want to do this. You take your, uh, your line, string it up to the other end. Make sure when you put, when you wrap the line around, that the string is on the top of the pin makes life much easier and make sure it's real tight real nice and tight and you just just bang it in the wall like that that's it done ready to go if you uh i'll just take you off my head and show you just down it you don't you want this nice and tight so it doesn't bend in the middle if it bends in the middle you get an incorrect reading and your bricks will be bowed so i'll just take you off and show you You should be able to see through there that it's pretty damn, pretty damn straight. Right, so from here, you get your trowel, get a bit of muck on your trowel, nice bit of Donald here. And when you put it down, don't just plock it down, don't just do that. I'm going to get a mucky wall now, what you want to do, let me do that again. When you do it, you want to do a quick motion 
like that. So essentially what it is, is it's down and you just trowel it along like so. And then from this point here, as I'm about to do, it's a little bit low here, a little bit, not enough muck there, so you just a little bit extra and just flick it in there. Always, what I like to do is always clear the back first because you want as little on the back as possible because you don't want anything falling down the back. And from here, you don't, you don't just want to plonk the brick down like that because this muck will hold it up and you'll have gaps in the middle and it won't go down as much as you want. So what you do is you just tap, 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 tap all the way along and then again, just clear the back off and also clear the front off. And give it another little tap and then there you go. That is what you call a bed. And what I was told many years ago is spend more time making your bed than you do laying it. So take a bit of time getting it nice like this. Make sure you press it down because I'll explain why in a second. We'll get one of these bricks that we cut a second ago. And when you butter them up, I'm holding it like this. This is how I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it in just like that. So you hold it from the parts that you don't put mark on. And you look at where you're going to go, you're going to put mark, you've got to put it on this side. So yeah, when, when you get a bit of muck on your trail, get it on like that, but you need to flick it so that it stays on when you turn it upside down. Because otherwise if you have it on the side, it's just going to roll off. So you get a bit of muck on there. And the action is from top to bottom, and you've got a little bit left on the, on the trail, and you go sideways, top to bottom again, and you might need a little bit more, just a little flick on the bottom, and then top to bottom again, like that. And then when you put it in, these, this gap in the middle, when you put it in, it'll be a fraction higher than where it's supposed to be. Well, in this case, it's not. So I need a little bit more muck in there. Bad example there, let's get rid of that. So from there, as I was saying, you want this these ridges a bit higher. So when you put it down, it'll be a fraction higher than where it's supposed to be. And if you're looking down on it, you should see the perp below. This brick should be in line with that perp below. And from there, all you do is you tap it down. But you don't just want to pay attention to the top. You need to pay attention to the bottom as well. So if I tap it down, pay attention to the top to start with. Once you get that in line with the top, scrape off the excess you must have the bottom of the brick in line with the top. Otherwise you get what is called hitching and grinning. Where, for example, you'd have the bottom sticking out more than the top, or the other way around is the top sticking out more than the bottom. That is hitching and grinning. You want it nice and flush all the way down. And when you lay to this line, you must have, you don't ever have the brick touching the line. You want there just to be a, a Rizzler paper's width of, um, of gap between so that you don't, if you were touching the line, you might push it out. Even just pushing it out that little bit, the whole wall, the whole rest of the course will be out. So you want it just a fraction out from there. And then if you're ever worried, just give it a little flick. You'll know if it, if it was touching. I mean, if that's touching like that, it stops. It doesn't bounce more than once. Whereas you give it a bounce, it bounces more than once. So right, there's that one brick. So what I'll do is I'll quickly run through this course and uh, let you watch and see what it's like. Because I'm using muck that I've dug up out of the ground rather than stuff that I've bought, I can only go, I'd say, furthest max that along because this muck dries quite quickly. So you have to be a bit, a bit rapid with this. And the video before, remember explaining how all frogs are always up. So you just pick it up you don't have to spin it around or anything, because if that was like that, I'd look at it, I'd have to pick it up and go, oh, what way round is it, that way, that way, I don't know. But in this case, you just pick it up, butter it up, and sling it in there. Taking care to make sure you're looking at these perps. Just tap it down, follow it through. When you, when you shave it off, it's called shaving and saving. But when you shave it off, hold on, you need to make sure that you don't smudge the brickwork below. So how you do that, so once you're in, you put her down. Give it a tap, oh, there's not much coming out of here. 
but you, you don't come in straight and flat you come in at about 45 degree angle and the trowel itself is at about 30 degrees you just slowly drag it along the face and that's basically it sometimes you get bricks with little well especially in these crappy well these dodgy bricks you get chips and stuff out i just spin them around and use the other side just plonk it in like so tap i like to tap each end with the the butt of the trowel rather than with this i just i don't know each to their own but i just find it there you go i just find it better than tapping the top down get a bit more on there lovely jubbly keep going with that There we go, right, we're out of bricks, half bats, so get the hammer. All you do, especially with this, you look at that, you can't get that end of that. You want both ends rather than that. So you pick a brick, which has got relatively good both sides. Just bang it in half. Trim the little bits off with the trowel. Butter her up. Sling her in there. Just like that. As Tommy Cooper said. Just like that. Simple Simon. Lovely. Another one. Bites the dust. Put her in. Again, you check the tops and the bottoms. If you don't put enough muck in, you get something like this. So you're gonna have to point that in afterwards. But that's inevitable, really. You're gonna, there's gonna be a bit of pointing here and there. Well, I'll say that. You shouldn't really have to, but. Again, 45 degree angle, drag it back. It's better to do it a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker than slowly, just so if you do it a bit too slow, like there, there's a tiny little smudge there. I don't know if you can see it here. If I can zoom in, I'll try and zoom in. But you want a nice flush finish. And there's that same bloody brick. You know how bent that brick is, right? Or banana brick. Snap that in half. And Plonk her in, have a look down. Seems good for my angle. Don't quite know what your angle's like, but if you can see down there, it should be pretty straight. A little bit of a wobble in a perp. It's, it does happen, it's not the end of the world. Like I said in a few episodes ago, a lot of people see brickwork as a blur, it's just a big ball of colour. There's nothing, I'm gonna lay that bricks, so I keep picking it up. They just see colour, and that's about it really you don't really pay attention to what the bricks are doing where they're going how they look you just see oh look that's a red brick house or oh, well, that's a yellow brick house and all that but being in the trade if some of you out there are in a trade you know what i'm about i live relatively close to london i go into london a fair bit and there's some lovely old buildings there i'm always wandering around having a gander at all the stonework all the brickwork my girlfriend's always like, oh, what's up with that building? What's up with that building? I spend a lot of time just counting bricks, seeing what bricks they use, all of that. Yeah, if you're out there and you're a bricky or a stonemason or something like that, get down in the comments and let me know what you think about this. How would I do it different? How do you do it different? Well, I've been doing this 18 years, so I'm pretty much stuck in my ways now. Some people pick up bad habits. Let me down, know down in the comments if if there's a bad habit that I picked up like here. This is fraction over, so this perp is miles too big. So what I'm going to do is I just shimmy everything up and I spread that big gap over all of these bricks. It might be over a little bit on some of these perps, but by the time you come here, it's relatively sorted out. That might be a bit of a big perp, but I'm not too bothered.
All right, let's try and get to the end here because I know this memory card has got about fucking five minutes of some card space left on it, so I'm gonna try and get here a bit quick. So you can see me at the end. That's in there. Lovely bit of gear. And when you go behind, dig out all the snots. When they come out the back, they're called snots. But in this case, because I've cleaned it up like this before you lay it, it means you don't have snots out the back. Well, generally, you mean, it means you don't have snots on the back. So, you ain't got to worry going around it. I like to, I like to have a look, after I've done the course, just to have a look-see. Plonk that one in there, and we should be good. I want to do an extra tap again 45 degrees quick shave there's a little smudge on there not your boy rodian don't be doing that again slap on the hand for that one now right at the end you should a brick should fit in there so you pick a brick out which one that one looks nice you test it first yep yeah, that's pretty good maybe about 12 mil perps rather than 10 but in all honesty these are rough old bricks and i'm trying to make it this is my excuse trying to make it look a bit rough and old so I'm not too paying too much attention to perp sizes and things like that if you had a nice clean crisp brick i'd say that's imperative but i like the way this looks and there you go give that a, a little spring have a look along that all looks pretty tasty to me a little tap here and there and there you go there's one course done what i'll do is i need to change the memory card on this gopro so i'll do that now and uh i'll come back to you and we'll I'll just lay a couple of courses, do the same thing again. Right, so I haven't changed the, uh, the card. I've got 11 minutes on here and I'm going to quickly do another course. So, because I'm gonna have to take all the data, all of the, uh, cool, you gotta pull these quite tight when you go up again. Cool, nice and tight, pull that lovely tight, yep, yeah, like that, just bang her in. And I'll show you a little trick here. So that's a bit above there above the the bricks so what you've got to do is you have to bring this down best way to do that get a little bit of gear just a little bit scrape it on the back of the brick like that get any old brick pull the line out lean that on there and bob jungle there you go right so let's quickly sling this course in this one's a little bit a little bit down actually so what i'll do i'll do the same over here yeah, we've got 11 minutes. Should be able to get course done in 11 minutes. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done anything with this card yet. So what I'll do is I'll do this, and I'll leave the episode there. So here we go, nice quick one. Let's go. A quick bit in it. Yeah, I'll leave the episode here after this because I'll have to take all the, all the info off this card and start playing around with it. But you get the idea of it. So yeah. Do you know what? This muck's not too bad. It's not drying that quickly. It is pretty damn cold out. So I'll just run a bit. Oh, right, there you go. It's got a little chip out of this brick, but I don't mind that much because I'm going for the rustic look on this house. So a little bit of a chip here and there. I'm, I'm not being too too picky about it. Right, check one side, check the other side. Both looking all right. Snap her in half. There we go, lovely jubbly and butter it up. When I was taught in college, I was told that a bricklayer should never have to put his hands on the cement, on the muck, on the gear. It should always be on the trowel, on the brick, in the wall, end of. You should never have to touch cement. Look at that, that's a right old funny one. It's going in though. could be quite smart saying I'm wearing a pair of gloves so I'll never really touch it but yeah you should never ever touch it because if you pick a brick up and you've got muck on your hands you're going to smudge the hell out of the bricks so oh that's a right on knobbly one that's a tricky one to lay so yeah remember that never touch the muck with your hands otherwise you'll get a smudgy brick now I'm going to cut these with the trowel but this is what that scutch hammer was for the one that I showed you earlier but in all honesty I don't the only thing I'll use is a trail and a hammer when I run a line 
that's floating over a bit but I'll get it back because I know there's a perp up there that needs it floating over means when you're putting the brick down and your perp is a bit like that it's, it's probably halfway through that line it's called floating over so you're floating over the line oh, I'll use this, use this one that's a nice looking one butter up nicely slinger in there you go plus yeah that perp's in line now plus these bricks they are so so varied in their size some of them are like almost 20 mil bigger than others so i'm not really paying a large amount of attention to the perps because these bricks are so fucking dodgy but that's the uh, that's the aesthetic of it so when you chip bricks be careful you don't do that because getting a bit of stone under a under a brick is a pain in the ass because you've got to lift it up and if it's in the perfect place you don't really like lifting the brick up once it's been put down do your brick work right once then you won't have to knock it down when i was training i have had to knock brick work down before and do it again because it was rough but when you're training that is kind of expected you do it once and you know never to do it again because i'll tell you what i did it once and i have never done it since i built a pair on the corner of a wall right next to someone's front door i built it and even i thought at the time i looked at it and went that's a bit that's a bit dodgy but being young and stupid i left it and then once the roof was gone on and all sorts the customer came around they walked in the front door they had the front doors been put on it was pretty pretty much finished and he said what is going on there the perps on the bottom were like this size and as you came up to the top the perps were like they were like 30 mil big they were it was horrific even people who don't look at brickwork every day you can see that and go that is you can't miss it so i had to cut the whole thing out and do it all over again it didn't look too bad afterwards but you do that once and i tell you you won't ever do it again i don't as far to my knowledge i've never taken down any brickwork since that day and that was about 15, 20 years ago. Something like that, I can't even really remember. It's a while ago. Maybe not 20 years, but I was about 18. That was a dodgy man. Go, another one bites the dust, snaps in arm. I'll do it with the trowel to save time, because by the time I walked over there to pick up my scutch, and I snapped it in half with the trowel. Great, shave, save, lovely. Look on the back for snots, no, but all right. Move to the next board, clean all that crap off that I've been flicking in it. Nice bit of gear. Get it in there. Lovely jabbly, look at that. That's fucking nice, that is. Uh, what are we on a, a full, what we'll do? Bit too much in there, just scuff the middle off. Also, when I like to put bricks down, I do it in a particular way. I'll show you when I put a full one on, the next full one, oh look, smudge that, naughty boy. I'll show you, so I didn't explain before. Right, I bet probably coming to the end of this, 11 minutes on this memory card, so I better get wriggle on. I can do it with this, so I'll put the top in and then drag it in whilst applying pressure so that this one's a bit floating over it's better well, let me explain properly again so i'll get a full size brick again just butter it up as you would do normally and then i put the top in and with pressure I, as i'm pulling back i push the bottom down then you tap it in that way you get a nice full joint in the perp like that brick but I won't notice that up here right and in this case this is where some people I've been told before that you shouldn't do this but I continue to do it and that flip muck on the wall because I disagreed with the per with the building inspector at the time one thing you shouldn't do is disagree with the building inspector you do what he says but when he ain't around who cares <laughs> so there's gonna be no muck in the top here when you put that brick in so what I do 
is you butter the top up, scrape it down either side like so, then you butter up as if you were going to do it normally. So once you put that in and lower it down, you've got muck in the top. And that, just flick and push on the top, push it in, flick it down, push it in, flick it down, push it in. And when you come to joint that, there'll be plenty of muck in there. It might need an extra little push in the back because you can see a little bit in there, but that's perfect. There is a tool called a tuck pointer you can use to push the muck in there. And that way seems to work perfectly fine for me. That one's got a little scutch out of there. That one. Check the size, a little bit big, but I can pull that too. There we go. And that is how you lay bricks. Just like that. Again, Tommy Cooper. Just like that. Just like that. Shivy them up a little bit. Get a flick, make sure it's all right. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'll live with that. Yeah, that's good. We're good there. All right. So what I'll do, I'll jump over to the other camera, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Next time, what I'll do is I'll go through, finish this off, and I'll do how to joint it up with the joiner. So right, okay. I'll turn this off, and I'll drop you down to the next camera. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was us uh, laying a few bricks to a line. Hope you learned something. Let me know down in the comments if there's something that you do differently. That'd be always great to hear. Someone else doing their own little way of doing it. Yep, stick around, because next episode we are gonna be doing some jointing up. All that brickwork that we just put in there now, I'm gonna get a joint iron out, we're gonna rub it all up properly, show you exactly how it's all done. So stick around for that. Yeah, if you like this, uh, hit a like down below, uh, subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you guys next episode. Take care, have a good one, see ya.